beautiful people. My name is Amanda Zitto and it is that time of year again. It is Q&A time. I asked you guys some questions over on the community tab, on Instagram, and on Facebook. So I'm going to be answering your questions today. If I don't answer your question, chances are that I probably answered it in my other Q&A videos, which I will link up above my head. Starting off with Justin Hughes, what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen magpie? I know this was probably a joke, but it is four to 14 meters per second. Daniel Farmer asked, did you really like the Tiger 800 or secretly prefer a true dual sport like the smaller 450s? I myself ride the 17 Tiger 800 XCX low. I ask myself the same question all the time. So what's your take? Mine is that I sometimes wish I went dual sport, not ADB. To be honest, Daniel, the only times that I wish that I had a smaller dual sport is really just to fill out my bike collection. Of course, there are definitely times on trails where I'm like, this would be a lot easier with a lighter bike. However, I 100% do not regret going the ADB route over dual sport because I just don't think that I ride enough dirt at the moment to make a dual sport worth it. I'd be sacrificing a lot more comfort on road than the ability to ride it more easily off road, if that makes sense. Chris Lees asks, any advice on filming and shooting photographs to someone who knows absolutely nothing and do you ever think about coming to Australia? I've definitely thought about coming to Australia, but it's definitely a like way down the line kind of goal. As for the first part of your question, I would suggest looking up uh, channels like Maddie Hippoya and Peter McKinnon, which I will leave links to down in the description, and digging through their older videos about, you know, beginner photography tips and beginner videography things, you'll learn a lot. And the other part that I will suggest is just make little goals. Don't try to learn everything at all at once. It's, it's a lot. And the learning curve is real. <laughs> I think first and foremost, focus on getting good audio, then focus on being able to craft a really great story, then focus on things like composition and lighting and white balance and all the things. Patty Outback says, where did I leave my bike keys, Amanda? <laughs> Patty, did you check under the dog? I am a farm boy to ask, what is your most favorite, longest, or most expensive trip? Isn't that like three questions in one? I could definitely just cheat and say the pilgrimage. That was definitely the longest. Most expensive might actually just be a tie between the Baja trip and my trip to go attempt to ride the captor at the beginning of this year. Those both ended up being over $2,000, but in different ways. Like the captor was a very unexpected, oh shit, I have to fix my clutch now. On the Baja trip, we were supposed to camp a lot more often, which was supposed to cut the budget down significantly. And then we got down there and one of our party decided that they didn't want to camp, so we hoteled it a lot more than we were supposed to. On top of that, my card got turned off when I crossed the border, so I was borrowing money from friends, so there wasn't an easy way for me to keep track of the amount of money that I was spending. So that turned out to be a lot. A lot. It was a lot. I definitely probably could have uh, spent a lot less money had I gone by myself. <laughs> Dennis Cantrell asks, what are some lesser known parks you would recommend? Also, do you camp to ride, ride to camp, or a little of both? I will always, always, always say Medicine Rock State Park in Eastern Montana. Even the people in the town that I spoke to that was closest to the state park didn't even know that it was there. And there was only like one other group camping there when I went, um, and it is gorgeous. Makoshka State Park is a little bit more popular in Montana, but I think that a lot of people outside of Montana don't know that it exists. That's in Glendive. It's also in eastern Montana. There are, of course, others that I could probably think of, like Gates of the Rockies outside of Helena. In Oregon, I think Cottonwood Canyon does not get as much attention as it deserves. It's beautiful, especially at sunset. Oh, and do you camp to ride, ride to camp, or a little of both? I think I'm a camp to ride person. Like, I don't just go camping for the sake of camping it's i'm always like on my way someplace and camping is the cheapest way to stay <laughs> jeff hudspeth says we're having our hoity-toity friends over for dinner saturday would it be bad form to tell them it's a potluck i think it would be bad form not to warn them critter moto asks have you ever been up to the west coast of canada what's your longest moto adventure to date both in distance and duration i answered the second part of your question already uh, I have not been up to the west coast of Canada. Harley Martian asks, what would you tell young Amanda? My first reaction is to say, don't date that guy, but also I am who I am because of the result of that relationship. I am 
who I am because of the decisions that I made as young Amanda, but also I'm a little bit effed up because of the decisions of young Amanda. <laughs> Number two, what would you change about your writing lifestyle? There really isn't anything I can change about my writing lifestyle at the moment because most of the things that I would change require more money than I currently have. So <laughs> three, should I have a beverage when I get home on Friday? Always, unless you have a problem. Fred the Barber, hey Amanda, I was wondering if you've ever had the opportunity to try a lighter dual sport bike for off-road riding. I realize ADV bikes suit your long distance riding lifestyle, but I can't help thinking a lower dual sport might be easier and more fun for you on the off-road riding. I think I answered this a little bit earlier, but I have ridden a lighter dual sport. I've also ridden dirt bikes, and to be honest, I wouldn't trade any of my ADV bikes for a dual sport. From Instagram, the Gorilla Biker, best base layers you've used for cold and or do you use them and why? Best base layers. So I'll start this off with the fact that I am allergic to merino wool. So anytime that I do wear wool, there has to be a layer of fabric between my skin and the wool. So most of my base layers are polyester. Um, I think the one that I like the most from the top is a polyester base layer from Wilderness Technology. And then for the bottoms, I have these fleece lined leggings from Eddie Bauer that I love. And then I have just some generic off-brand merino wool uh, leggings and top that I wear over top of that. Walmart photos are generic. <laughs> That's an amazing username. What is the safest way to transport a laptop on the bike? I'm so not qualified to answer this question. <laughs> I will tell you what I do because I'm a cheapskate. I don't have a Pelican case, even though I probably should. That's probably the best way to transport a laptop on the bike is to get a Pelican case with foam in it and cut a hole out for the laptop and put the laptop in the Pelican case. But what I do is I put the laptop in a foam sleeve and then I wrap that foam sleeve in a puffy jacket and another jacket and then I stuff it in between my sleeping bag and my tent and my big duffel. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Rick Schaefer, who makes the best sandwich? You know who makes the best sandwich? If you can find an old school pharmacy that still has a sandwich counter and makes milkshakes, those are the best sandwiches. Julie asks, do you carry a satellite tracker? If so, how has it been useful? Julie, I do have a satellite tracker now. I didn't used to. After I broke my wrist, my boyfriend's family bought me one. <laughs> I have the Garmin InReach SE Plus. That just essentially means that I don't have all the fancy map stuff that the Explorer version has, but it does the satellite text messaging, which is the whole point of having that device for me personally, since I normally use my phone as my GPS or a paper map. I also have an actual GPS, but I don't use it that often, to be honest. How has it been useful? Well, thankfully I haven't needed it all that bad, but it has been nice to be able to text people while I'm out of service, especially like if I am being anxious and I'm out of service, I can text Jonathan or text my mom and just let them know that I'm thinking about them. And like just one text back from them makes me feel reconnected to the world and calms me down a lot. <laughs> Renato asks, if you could start all over with unlimited budget, what bike would you ride? I probably still would have gotten Lazarus because I love her to pieces and I would never give up all the lessons that I have learned because of her, but I probably would have gotten an Africa twin. <laughs> Lenny Dixon, how much of your writing is done on road versus off pavement? I like to think that it's 70% on road and 30% off, but to be more accurate, it's probably 80% on road and 20% off. Jeremy Thorne, what is the most dangerous moment you've experienced while riding solo? probably breaking my wrist because that probably could have gone a whole lot worse. <laughs> David, did you find that you enjoy the ride more when you are solo? Absolutely. 100%. Cindy, what are the most useful off-road skills that can be learned in an ecosystem of concrete and asphalt? Probably learning slow speed skills on your bike standing up and practicing balancing on that bike standing up. Bill, how do you maintain sanity while working at a muggle job? <laughs> Dreaming of the next adventure. Stefan, Steven, Stefan, how many miles are on the CB500X now? How's it holding it up? How's the soft luggage doing? What was the roughest off-roading you've done on it so far? And what, if any, mods have you done? I think there's 21,000 miles on the CB500X now. The only issues that I've ever had with the CB are things that are mostly my fault. I broke the radiator, I had to replace it. I got the wrong chain, it popped off, I had to replace that. You know, really silly things. The engine is doing perfectly fine. How's the soft luggage doing? It is doing amazing. Did I mention 
today that Wolfman Luggage is amazing and that you should go support them. I rode all of Barlow Road on the CV500X on Mount Hood. Uh, if you have never seen photos or experienced that road before, it is kind of rough for a bike that really shouldn't be on it without all of the extra accoutrement. That one in combination with my first ever PNW dual sport ride, which was led by Chris Hunt, who told me that it was definitely beginner friendly. And so I went with street tires uh, with no moss to the bike whatsoever. And I messed up my hip pretty damn good towards the end. <laughs> that, that ride was pretty darn rough. That was also on Mount Hood. <laughs> what if any mods have I done? I added heated grips. I have uh, bigger luggage racks for the new soft luggage that support them a lot better than my old racks did. Oh, I added the little bar on my windshield so I can put my phone up there instead of on my handlebars so that my tank bag isn't smacking my phone every time I turn the handlebars. <laughs> I, other than that, there isn't a whole lot else that I have done to that bike. I really need to get engine guards. <laughs> Helen, what is your guilty pleasure? I was gonna say audiobooks, but I don't think that I feel that guilty about it. Totally unrelated motorcycles. I love watching through hikers. Every once in a while, I'm like, oh, that would be so cool. But when I actually think about through hiking, I'm like, that doesn't sound like a whole lot of fun to me. <laughs> but I absolutely love watching through hiker vlogs on YouTube. I, yeah. Jalay, I'm sorry if I'm ruining all these names, you guys. What is the one luxury you always make room for and what is the most dreaded part of camping? I mean, my cameras are probably the luxury because you definitely don't need to bring all of the camera equipment that I bring. Most dreaded part of camping, packing everything up in the morning. I don't mind setting up camp. It's not that bad, but I hate packing everything up in the morning. Steve asks, how do you come up with destinations? I made a video about that. William asks, what brand of tires would be best for my V-Strom to go mostly paved road, but the occasional gravel? Tires are really subjective and everybody's opinion of them is different. Like for example, I really like the 805s on my Tiger and I don't mind riding them on slab and other people hate it. So just take my advice with a grain of salt and know that my experience of those tires are based on riding them on different vehicles, but not knowing the size of the tires that you need for the V-Strom if you can get them, I highly encourage you to try out the Continental TKC 70s. I have them on Lazarus. I have them on the CB500X. I love those tires. So if you can get those, they come with my stamp of approval. They are a little bit expensive. Um, I think Shinko also has the 705s that are kind of similar um, and a lot more cheap, but those are much more restricted to your tire size. Yeah. <laughs> Dom Carr, have you considered the Rally Raid kit for your CB500X? Yes, but it's a lot of money. Do you want to buy the parts for me? Alec Henderson, I'd love to know how you plan gas stops. I'm planning a cross-country trip, but only have 150 mile range. and don't know if I should be scared by that or not. I made a video about that if you want to go check that out. Um, in general, just carry a little extra gas can. You should be fine. There's very few places in the United States that uh, don't have a gas station every 100 miles. If you're not in the US, carry some extra gas and do some research. <laughs> Eric and Diane Sweeney, are you still doing the buy a gallon of gas? I haven't heard you say it in your new videos. I donated one a few weeks back and wanted to make sure that it made it to you. It did make it to me. Thank you so, so much. And if the rest of you didn't know, I am still doing the buy a gallon of gas thing over on my Ko-Fi. It's just another way to support me if you don't want to commit to the Patreon monthly subscription thing, or if you don't want to buy a t-shirt from me, you can donate as little as $3 um, to my Ko-Fi account and that gets me another gallon of gas and gets me closer to my future goals. Wink, wink, go. Link in the description. <laughs> I think that is probably it. If I missed your question, I am sorry. I probably answered it already in one of my other videos or in my last Q&A, which I will link above or down in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching and your continued support. I really appreciate you. And also, speaking of people that I appreciate, huge, huge shout out to my supporters over on Patreon. They make these videos possible. I could not do it without them. If you would like to support this channel and like my content for as little as $1 a month, you can get early access to videos like these over on my Patreon. Link to that is down in the description. If that's not up your alley, that is totally okay. Like I said earlier, you can buy me a gallon of gas over on Ko-Fi. Links to that down in the description. If you can't do any of that right now, that is totally okay. I appreciate you guys just for watching these videos. And in the meantime, guys, I will see you later. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine.
fine, it's fine, it's fine. There are a lot of planes and I'm sorry. Foxglove883 asks if you were planning a trip of a lifetime, where would it be? I actually answered this one in my last Q&A if you wanna go check that out. Um, doodle on a motorcycle. Also ask what would be your dream modification. I'm gonna go check out my last Q&A. I answered those already. <laughs> right, question for the end screen crew. Do you ride with heated gear, yes or no? I have been riding with mobile warming heated gear for a while because it is wireless and I know from experience with other heated gear that I hate being plugged into the bike and I have been enjoying it. Battery life is kind of short, but I just turn it on when I absolutely need it. Even on the lowest setting, it's still a lot nicer than not having it at all. Not spawn. <laughs>